I'm getting the vibe, perhaps wrongly, that Opie isn't actually homophobic. No, no, just I, a bit of a nugget. <laughs> I don't think that Opie's actually homophobic. I, Deep dive, yeah, straight away. Oh, buy me a um, drink first, post. Wow, you have such <laughs> strong morals; they cannot be destroyed. It's gonna call me Gollum is, next. Well, <laughs> I've seen you in the morning. <laughs> You're through to 1-800-DRAMA. The show where you show your biggest dilemmas. And we help you navigate them. I'm Sharba. And I'm Jamie. Come join us as we help people figure out if they are the drama. Because sometimes you just need an outside perspective. And we can all expand our own mindsets along the way. Wait, am I the drama? All right, instead of red flag, green flag today, mm-hmm. I was wondering if I may take the platform to be a little bit vulnerable. Jamie, you know what I'm talking about vulnerable because we've spoken about this before. Yes. If I giggle, by the way, it's mostly because I am a very nervous person and that it seems to just be a flaw of my human nature. It's like when evolution says that you should poop when you are anxious and it's just silly, but it is what it is. Please I, don't I, poop. I, I will try not to poop, but I, I, I am trying to be very serious with this, even if I come across as very lighthearted. Let me first start by saying I absolutely love this platform. I was going to say I don't intend for this to be a call out. I kind of do intend for this to be a call out but not to everybody and I totally appreciate that even the people I'm calling out here most likely have good intentions. I've just been feeling a growing resentment Mm -hmm. if I'm being really honest towards this platform and to this gorgeous little safe space community that I've spent years building up and I wanted to voice it so that it didn't get that way. Is this making sense? Yeah do you want me to just specify that this is about YouTube because of the YouTube comments? Yes yes oh my gosh we on YouTube have the video version of this out where a lot of people can leave comments and not just ratings I mean please write us because <laughs> helpful. But also on the comments, I always encourage comments. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm actually really proud of this channel and the community that we've been able to build based on having meaningful conversations to help all of us learn and grow. But I always say every single time, be kind with what you're saying. More recently, I've noticed that there's been less kindness. It's specifically directed towards me. And isn't constructive. These comments also occur when we both share the exact yep. same opinion. You're finding you get called out significantly more. Absolutely. And Jamie, not so much at all. Oh, ever. Like, pretty much <laughs> never actually and this isn't just based on like just views or hunches we did a deep mm-hmm. dive into the comments after I voices Jamie's being like hey I'm feeling kind of disheartened about this god if we're gonna sound super scientific about it random sampled a bunch of comments from the three groups of videos and compared them our PhDs are being put to you somewhere whilst it's not new to me to feel like people can criticize myself more openly often because I am a brown woman let's be honest because that is what it is mm-hmm. because there is no other extrapolating factor when it's the exact same values on the exact same format of content the only difference is it's happening more when i'm sitting next to a white man mm-hmm. i'm really disappointed to see that happening on my channel and i totally appreciate the unconscious bias as a thing i just don't like it and i'm noticing that you guys are messaging and being like ah oh, why don't you respond to us as much and it's not the fact that sharp's gotten too big for her boots i mean you've done this for the longest time right you mm-hmm. don't really look at comments because it can affect your mental health to be exposed to hundreds and hundreds of voices who are talking about you it's a very unusual place to be i'm feeling that a lot more at the moment so just a message I guess as we continue this podcast and have so much fun with it because that is what I want to do I also just want to remind people that unconscious bias is a thing and it may be affecting you and if you're going to leave a comment on one of these videos I would really appreciate if you do that with kindness I'm not asking you to not criticize me I'm just asking you to be mindful of the ways that you do that and the places in which that could be coming from I think it's important to acknowledge and that like actually from my perspective you are really good at taking criticism I've seen the comments on the ones that you you did on your own and I've seen the comments in comparison on the podcast and in comparison to what people say about me and it's very much just like there's no intention to educate it's literally just anger directed towards you because you had a particular judgment on something that I also shared and there's zero mention of me within those comments it's an honest opinion from somebody but there's no kindness there it's just mean and it's particularly mean because it singles you out when I was sat right here saying the same thing Mm, It may not also be coming from like a place of intending to be mean. I think sometimes it can be coming from a place of I want to share my view, which I wholly encourage you to do. But you're right. The way it comes across Mm. is just mean. And it's funny because the things that stick with me are not the things that are important issues. (laughs) It's this topic that we had on popcorn. (laughs) Somebody throwing a popcorn kernel. I think we had different verdicts in the end. We did. I said everybody sucks here. Yeah. You said not the drama. Yeah. Totally fine. My point is throwing anything at anyone is wrong. I probably have 
had like the actual objectively morally questionable opinion on that one. You were the one that was like, no, we hey, should, maybe we you know, shouldn't throw, things, we shouldn't at throw things at people. And yet my comment was then extrapolated. I appreciate, I understand what the slippery slope fallacy is. What I don't appreciate is then people annihilating me in the comments and rather richly extrapolating what I said, which mm. was a point of extrapolation, to then say, oh, gay marriage will lead to bestiality. So bizarre, because you literally <laughs> said, maybe we shouldn't throw popcorn at somebody because that could cause someone else to have a negative reaction and we don't want that. And well, also, also we just shouldn't throw things. Stop? Because, you know, if, yeah. you, if you take this into your own hands, what else? I appreciate how the slippery slope fallacy plays into that. But I will also say, when people say that against propaganda, it's because gay marriage is inherently not a bad thing. Mm. So when people are using that as a manipulative technique to say, hey, well, people say gay marriage could lead to bestiality and therefore we can't use those arguments. You're comparing a good thing to a bad thing. Whereas throwing something at someone is, is already a bad, bad thing. And I'm just trying to say, where do you there draw that line on bad things? You know, the point being, it doesn't <laughs> matter about the popcorn. I don't mind. I even said, I agree with you. I secretly agree with you, <laughs> but I cannot sit here and say that you are not bad for throwing popcorn at yeah. someone. Yeah, it just turned into a much bigger thing in the comments. Yeah, I haven't seen anybody do this to me when no. I've had an opinion about something where they then go, oh, well, if you think this about this situation, does that mean that you would excuse this really extreme situation and like almost accusing you of forgiving really, really bad things or having very bad opinions just because you shared this one opinion about a very specific context. And nobody's ever done that to me. And context is important. There is a balance. Everything is about duality and balance, right? That's why I love making these videos. If there was just one rule, there'd be no need for this forum. That's why we explore the nuanced context mm -hmm. of these posts. But there is also overarching rules that we need to look at, and it's not a bad thing to look into them. But people are never so brash as to say anything like that to you. No. And it only ever happens in the videos where we are together. None of these comments happen when I am alone. And I find that so intriguing. I think it's that sense of comparison where the unconscious bias is playing in. Mm. So just keep that in mind because it's making me sad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then obviously people can share disagreements with our views. Absolutely. And wrongness that we may have said because we're not perfect. We're going to be wrong quite a lot of the time because we don't know everything about everything and our own biases play a role here. And I'm also a bit hung up on that word wrong because okay. as we've said, no, not because you've said it, but with all of these, there isn't really a right answer. All of our lenses will see things as right or wrong depending on our experiences. Yeah. There are times where it's just like don't <laughs> kill a person, that is wrong, right? But throwing a piece of popcorn at someone could be interpreted as wrong, could be interpreted as not. Mm. And part of the value I think of being able to discuss these things is having an open mind, right? That's why we do it, to open our minds to these viewpoints and these lenses that we might not have ourselves. Yeah. To see it and be like, ah, oh, put myself in their shoes, I get where they're coming from. These things are grey for a reason. Mm -hmm. That's what makes this so spicy and fun. So let's keep it spicy and fun. How I'm do you sure feel? this will be I'm feeling scared. No legit. I'm feeling nervous because I feel like when this goes out, people are going to be like, oh, who would have thought that Sharbra of all people would hide behind her brown woman of colour playing the minority, la di da di da I'm always aware that people are going to try and use my characteristics against me. I don't want that to happen on this platform. <sighs> and breathe. Shall we go fishing? For assholes. Oh, drama. Am I the drama <laughs> for telling my dad he's a horrible parent and that I'll never forgive him for giving my mum's jewellery to my stepmother? Whoa, oh. this is a deep dive. Yeah. Straight away. <laughs> Buy me a oh. drink first post, wow. Do you ever have judgments? We do sometimes have judgments on just the titles. Oh yeah. What the heck is going on here? I know, you know, I want the context, but... The context can often flip it. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, oh. it's the ones that seem mm -hmm. the most tame and I'm like, oh, not the drama. I'm like, oh my God, yeah. you are the biggest drama. <laughs> Growing up, OP says, I was a difficult child child and I was always rude to my mum. She passed away in January 2019 when I was 16, sorry to hear that, and I was quite honestly extremely broken and couldn't forgive myself for the way that I treated her while she was alive. That sounds very complex. Mm. Jamie, can you math for me? January 2019, how yeah. old is OP now? 21. My dad had apparently been planning on remarrying and started seeing my now stepmother from the beginning of 2020. So that was okay, about a, year a year after. They got married in December 2020 mm. and the most hurtful thing for me regarding this was the fact that he didn't tell me about her. Oh. I accidentally found out and had to confirm him and only then did he tell me that he'd been planning on remarrying. Ooh. Ooh. I'd be intrigued about the level of their relationship as well, like There's how much so contact much they're in. Needed, yeah. Right? Like, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think sometimes I can see it from the kid's point of view of being like, why did you block me out? But then I can mm. also see it from a dad's point of view of being like, I was trying to safeguard you. Because there's this age old trope, isn't it, of a child not wanting to feel like their parents are being replaced. And yeah. so parents sort of delaying and finding the right time in bunnies to, um, yeah. to make that happen.
it happen. It's so. like the pregnant sister who just showed up eight months. That's probably <laughs> That's what too you late. Avoid, yeah. right? I tried to get along with her, says OP, and be as nice as I could allow myself to be since I was still grieving. Totally understandable. Things didn't go well and we got into fights all the time because she was always trying to be in control of my daily life and be involved in my academics, which I didn't feel comfortable with, hmm. since neither of my parents ever did that, and I've always been independent and self sufficient with my education and career decisions. Mm. At the world's itchiest nose. Do you ever get that where your nostril just goes really itchy? I was like, oh my god. Sure you can. That help. Yeah. Really appreciate okay, that. You're welcome. <laughs> they would only ever advise me. She mm. would keep making comments like, "You can't study such a difficult course. Your dad should have chosen something easier and less expensive." And it pissed me off. Oh, that just sounds really condescending as it well, does. though. You can't study such a difficult course. Yeah. But then also, is it about money or is it about ease or ability, yeah. perceived ability? And also, I kind of feel like if you're a step parent coming in, you do need to be a little bit careful. Mm. Sure, assert yourself as somebody who has a duty of care. Yes. But there's a fine line, right? And I feel like something like this speak to the dad they would have been 17 by the time she came into the life but then 18 nearly or 18 by the time the marriage happened so like you're talking to an adult who's been raised by different people for their entire childhood and been doing courses that i'm sure lead up to their final choice yeah, <laughs> and like you've not known them that long and all of this stage yeah it just seems a bit yeah odd. yeah it does feel odd okay mm. odd vibes odd vibes from the step parent things kept spiraling and it got to a point where she would be jealous of the smallest forms of support or effort that my dad put in for me with sarcastic remarks like i don't understand why you keep prioritizing your daughter over everybody else in your life. It's like you can never love anyone more than her. Ew. Oh. Opie's put a note here that says, my dad isn't big on affection or caring words, gets easily flustered or awkward with affection. Mm. Oh, I find this weird. I find it weird that stepmom would be saying this kind of thing in front of child. But I also find it weird that stepmom would have this opinion. Like, I'm not being funny. Mm. If I was a parent to a child, yeah. especially if my co-parent has passed away, yeah. that child is the most important thing in my life. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's just just how it works. If you are a mm -hmm. new wife coming in, yes, you are important, but my child is always going to oh, yeah. be more important. Yeah. Right? No, I would 100% agree. Yeah. That's a huge red flag to me. I don't understand why somebody's with someone who's saying that as a bad thing. I'd be like, yeah. And what? I know, who's like, oh, you keep prioritizing your daughter over everybody else in your life. It's like, you can never you have a love duty of anyone care more than daughter. her. And it's like, actually, I don't know if I would love someone more than my child. Maybe like equally. I was going to say. In terms of like the partner who was the other parent of that child. I don't know. It's really difficult because I'd have to put myself in the mindset of you not being around anymore, which I don't want to do personally. But even if it wasn't a case of nobody being around, if we mm. have a child, yeah. I would fully expect you to prioritize that child over me. If there's a yeah. burning building, you're take the child oh and you God. leave me. Do you see what I mean? It's just, it's a thing, isn't it? It's the, a duty of care over children, a child. Yeah. yeah. I will say though, there's a difference between prioritise and loving mm. more. Because it does kind of grate on me a little bit when people are like, who do you love more? Daddy or Chip. <laughs> okay, but it's a different kind of love. Like sometimes the love is indifferently yes. different. They can be equal, yeah. but in such a different context, you don't... I find it kind of creepy that people compare some yeah, things. Yeah, you don't love a partner in the same way that you love your child. But like... prioritise is different because of that yeah. level of duty of care, in yeah. my opinion. No, I see what you're saying. And I think it's just also a really odd way to assert yourself particularly as a step parent to show jealousy towards your partner's treatment of their child like why are you trying to interfere with that relationship mm. deal with yeah. your thing separate it's to the a fact that your dad's completely also parenting. different relationship yeah. the signs of affection are going to be different i agree with you like it's really bizarre i kind of want more context as to how these things are seen as jealousy because i also appreciate that we're seeing this from the child's point of yeah. view it might be that what the child is reading is different to what the stepmother is intending to communicate. Is this going to end with a psych? This is just Cinderella. <laughs> <laughs> Let's Not to make on. light of this person's situation. I later found out, says OP, that my dad and his mother gave her my mum's most valuable belongings, including her jewellery, and they haven't even mentioned it to me. Interesting. Right. I told him that I was upset about it and I didn't want someone else having my mum's belongings. He said that those things were bought with his money and that I'm not old enough to be worrying about these things. Ooh. I think OP's like 18 at least at this point. Because you'd want something, wouldn't you, if your parent passed away, you want something to remember them by. I feel like there's a lot to unpack here. I think OP was just being honest and vulnerable in saying, look, it's making me feel some kind of way that someone else has my mum's stuff. Clearly that means a lot to OP. You're communicating that to your dad. And then your dad's saying, actually, I bought that with my money. And I'm like, but you gifted it. So yeah, who cares it's not who yours it? anymore. It's the mum's regardless yeah. of where it came from. And when you say I'm not old enough, that just kind of feels like you're shutting down that vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Like your kid's saying, hey, maybe this is something that I wanted to remember her by. Yeah. And you're going, I don't care. This is a financial logistic issue.
issue that you are too immature to understand. That was never going to yeah, go down well anyway. This was an emotional conversation yeah. and you turned it into a financial one. It was bizarre. Did your parents ever say to you, you're not old enough to be worrying about these things? I, not that I remember. I got that a lot. Coming from a broken household, one side of my family never had those discussions with me. And whenever I would say things, they'd be like, we don't discuss that with you. Mm. And I thought that was fine because I didn't know about anything. It was me inviting the conversation because right. of what my other side did. Yeah. And they'd be like, this is not a discussion for little child Shaba. But Don't you were actually it. a child. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. that's fine. But yeah. my point is on the other side, I would hear a lot of things and be involved in some of the discussions. But then when I wanted to say things, they'd be like, no, that's not for you to be involved oh. in. And I'm like, that is what really annoyed me. Because I was yeah. like, well, then I shouldn't even be knowing about it in the yeah. first place. Like, if I'm old enough to know, I'm old enough for you to explain to me in a way that's not going to cause me more worries by you just yes. shutting that conversation down. Yeah, Does I see what sense? you're saying. I agree. Bad parenting on dad's part there, for mm. sure. Fights got worse. And every time she would blame me for wasting my dad's money, I was literally telling him what outfit I wanted for my birthday, says OP. Right. Oh dear. One time it spiraled out of control and she told me to never eat the food that she makes and huh? asked me to get out. My dad didn't stand up for me and only dropped me off at my friend's place for the weekend. Oh, this is feeling really uncomfortable. It's definitely spiraling, right? Yeah. It could have been that dad dropped you off to give you a safe space and went home and had a massive go at stepmom. But how are you to know? Dad yeah. should also be, I guess, communicating to you that that can't have felt very nice. It's just confusing. Yeah. It's just, you can't in one breath say, look, you're too young. We're keeping you out. But then expose OP to this kind of... Yeah. And then be like, oh, but you're old yeah. enough to like get temporarily kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> I told him that he's a horrible parent for not standing up for his child and letting his wife treat me this way. And that I'll never forgive him for giving up my mum's gold to her. Mm. I told him that I've never seen him respect my mum's opinions or wishes and that it won't change the fact that he was a horrible husband just because he supports my stepmom with all of her opinions and wishes now. Oh, that's just added an extra layer. Yeah. That OP feels like her dad wasn't good to mum and is now being like overly like attentive to the stepmother. I'm all here for a parent growing but if your child has that opinion and there's a fine line right you can't be stepping into someone else's relationship because OP might not know what was actually going on in yeah. that relationship but at the same time if your child's trying to say that it's a point that you'd want to address right? Yes. I feel like there's obviously we're having one side of the story and this is how we need to treat this podcast and reading these we need to take what is in front of us and mm. this being the context of it. I'm sure there's other things going on. OP's already already admitted to being difficult when they were growing up mm -hmm. so we don't know exactly how things are going but at the very least this is a new person coming in asserting themselves as like I can now tell you what to do and it getting quite condescending and also on quite serious things and I'm just I'm questioning the stepmom's motives because there's the whole choose a different course both for ease but also less, less expensive, expensive and then being like oh yeah I'll take your dead wife's gold and like, also like don't have this outfit don't for have your this birthday. outfit yeah don't you're using your dad's money dad's money yeah, yeah no, but then is happy to take it herself and also Ooh. i'm sorry Ooh. if you were marrying later in life and the new partner had a previous partner and all of this and had children would you feel comfortable taking the dead partner's jewelry because i would not i would say no this isn't mine this Especially is for you, you or your kids kid has a problem with it like i don't know if stepmom's been made aware but dad clearly has been made aware yeah i just full on like even if there wasn't an issue i'd be like i'm very uncomfortable taking your exes or your dead partner's jewellery. Not the drama. Oh yeah, I think not that's the my drama. Badge. I just yeah. think it sounds super toxic. Yeah. It's weird to me when kids are put in a place where they have to also act like they're on the same level mm. as a parent. In the sense of being like, oh, yeah. you when... know, like money. But oh, don't worry, you don't have to think about these yeah. things. But yet you're exposed to it to think about it Yeah, anyway. they're getting mixed messages. So it's like being told what to do with their education and then being told they're too young to be involved in certain conversations. Mm. But then also, oh, I'm not going to feed you anymore. Oh, stop using your dad's money. Yeah. Oh, um, oh get kicked out. Get kicked out for the weekend because just get out of my house kind of vibe like you're treating you somebody you can't make these decisions independently of yourself yeah that's going to give somebody a bit of whiplash because it's like are you treating me like a child or are you treating me like an adult who you don't want in your house because it definitely feels like both yeah also when the mum's not there I do think the dynamic changes because that level of grief is so important yeah you have to be able to process it you mm -hmm. can't just be like oh it's a money thing I bought it it's my money you're too young to be worrying about these things well no there's more to it I also just find that a really bizarre statement you're yeah. absolutely right it's a gift it's like if we broke up and then I went, oh, I bought you those shoes. Give them back. Who does that? They're not mine. <laughs> I'm sure there are people that would. It doesn't matter if it was my money at the time it, something was bought. If I have gifted that to somebody, it's no longer mine. Mm -hmm. And it's not mine to say what happens to it. It's the mum's. Unless it's then given back to me, you know? Which maybe in the sense of a will, it has been. But that's 
my point, don't treat it logistically mm. when your kid is trying to come to you emotionally charged yes. and saying, hey, it makes me feel some kind of way that you're giving my mom's jewelry to your, to this new person mm. who I'm having some conflict with and resistance with in terms of trying to take over being a mom. I feel like OP needs a hug. Yeah. They lost their mom within two years and like that isn't a very long time to grieve over losing anybody, particularly a parent and particularly when you're still a teenager. Their dad was remarried with someone who they found they out about blind, blindsided late, by. Like, yeah. li- last minute. Blound. Blound. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you meant. And now that they're being treated in a very patronizing, condescending way often and then being kicked out and just, yeah, I don't agree with how they're being treated. Agreed. Even if even if they're a bit of a difficult child still, yeah. I still don't agree with how they're being treated. Uh, you I don't, don't... There's no context as well as to why mum passed away mm. and the toxicity and, the, you know, that slight mention at the end there of you were never a good husband from my view as a child to mum. Mm. You can't hold that blame of being a difficult child. I'm sure there's significantly more to the situation than we understand. This is what I'm saying. People are not assholes just for the sake of being assholes. <laughs> there is a reason that OP was a difficult child and I feel like yeah. OP's not been given a chance to express that and understand that and yeah. it sounds like there are more influences to that than even OP is aware of and yet yeah. they're taking the blame. Yeah. Hugs to you OP. Yeah. You're totally not the drama and, in my opinion. Yeah, totally not the drama. I'd love to read some comments. Yeah, let's see. Not the drama. Your dad sure is one though. Based on this math you're roughly 21 years old and you are not old enough to be worrying about these things. You are an adult now. It is fine to go low slash no contact with shitty people. Okay. Yeah, I would agree with that. Same. Not the drama. From what you've said here, your dad had it coming. Best of luck to you and keep taking those hard classes. Mm-hmm. Despite what your stepmom says, I can tell you're smart enough for them. Yes. 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 Yeah. I love this encouragement in the forum. Oh, I hope he's actually responded. Oh, okay. He said, yes, I'm actually currently pursuing law. So I did my fair bit of research and according to my country's law, since my mom died in test state, which means there's no will, mm-hmm. all the properties go first to the spouse since kids are minors mm-hmm. and legally he's not wrong anywhere. Technically, they still belong to him. But it is a tradition where I come from that mother's jewelry is passed down to the daughters or in case of no daughters, the son's wife. So I... it sounds culturally led as well. Yes. You can understand why OP's feeling some kind of way, right? Yeah. Like, oh. Even forgetting the law, like that, you know, you want something sentimental, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't really mind my dad having possession since we've already had the conversation and made it clear that he can give her any other jewelry that we own, which wasn't made specifically for my mum. Mm. Like the ones made with me in mind. Oh, oh of course. Because if it's culture that it gets passed down, the yeah. intention always was that OP would get those bits of jewellery. Yeah. Oh, and that's it's more really than just a money sad. thing, right? It is a sentimental thing. I don't think the money's even factoring into OP's mind on this. You're right. I would feel so uncomfortable yeah. if I was stepmom for even wanting to take that. Yeah. This is just weird. I'm getting angry now mm-hmm. at dad and stepmom. Grr. Who are you? Ugh. <laughs> I don't mind if he gives them to her since he's the one that bought them. Anyway, it's more of an emotional thing for me. And I've told him multiple times that I don't like it. OP, babe, you're not the arsehole. I mean, oh, you this, are not the drama. This makes me feel like OP's trying to be understanding. Yeah. But like, honestly, not the drama at all. Oh, someone suggested that every time you see the stepmom wearing the jewelry, you can say, oh, mum's jewelry looks lovely on you today. <gasps> yeah. Why not? Because yeah. honestly, the stepmom should feel uncomfortable about wearing it and taking it because that is just inappropriate. I would rather encourage that healthy communication Of course occurs you would, Shabba. <laughs> instead of petty remarks. But if petty remarks is what's going to help them see if healthy communication it is not working. Sounds like healthy communication hasn't been working, but I, I do no, agree we'll with say, like, you, that first approach. I don't approach. know if stepmom's been told. It, oh, dad's sure. been told. We sure. don't know if stepmom's been told. But I, speaking of stepmom, I'm not sure if she's going to respond very well to it, yeah, to be fair. I do agree with you that healthy communication as a first step is good. Are we talking but about also, the popcorn again? <laughs> snarky. Co- yeah, for context, I'm agreeing. Sorry, that's me being snarky. No, no, you're now. right. For me not taking things so seriously and intensely and stepping away from my trauma, say that comment. Yeah. Yeah. I feel bad for saying that. High five me. <laughs> that was a rubbish high five. Do it better. I feel bad that I'm suggesting doing bad things. Okay. Mum hat on, don't do that. But you know, like, Chub. don't you? <laughs> Our trauma's great. Your moral compass <laughs> has been born out of something. It's like been created in the fires of Mordor. It's that strong. Wow, thank you. I mean, it's good. It's just, <laughs> that makes it sound like you have like a no morals. Yeah. You have I'm such real. strong morals, they cannot be destroyed. It's going to call me Gollum is, next. Well, <laughs> I've seen you in the morning. <laughs> What do you mean? I woke up like this. <laughs> We're moving Short on. Jan. Yeah. No, why are you no, no. Me? I look great in the morning. You Stop do. It. I'm totally teasing you. You've never once even resembled Gollum. Thank you. You were on the other. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, I see it. No, you don't yeah. look like Gollum at no, all. No, I frequently sit by a lake eating raw fish. Jamie, how is this conversation led Sorry, to this? I have no idea. Right now. It's your fault Gollum came into this conversation. Sure. Blame the brown one. <gasps> <laughs> oh, drama. 
Am I the drama for telling my son that gay couples can't make babies? <laughs> I mean, it depends on if you're talking about cisgender gay couples physically not being able to have a baby without some form of like donor surrogacy adoption method. Like if you're literally talking- Scientifically. Scientific, the biological way that two human beings can create a baby together, then it's correct. But, you're not wrong, but are but, you wrong? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But if you say, <laughs> yeah, it, it really depends. Let's see. Mm -hmm. So OP says, my son, eight years old, grade two autism, if that matters. I feel like it does matter. Okay, is obsessed with geography and flags. Sorry, let me just explain why I say that that matters. If you're talking about, based on what you're saying, something factual like a conversation for a child to yes. understand, then yeah, it matters, doesn't it? Yeah, I see that. He asked what the rainbow flag was months ago. I told him it's for girls who fall in love with girls and boys who fall in love with boys. Very basic, but he is only eight years old, so... I mean, it, yeah. Yeah, okay, I see it. It's fine. A discussion totally arose... Totally raising anything beyond the L and the G, but sure. No, I, I know. I yeah, I think those conversations come in later. I think on a very basic level, it's just showing that there's different kinds of love. Yeah. yeah. A discussion arose that eventually led to me telling him same-sex couples can't make babies. Okay. I feel like we still need more information. Yeah, there. I feel like sometimes as well, people who aren't quite sure how to explain it do tie themselves in knots a bit. Yes. Trying yes. to make it both child age appropriate and also so not ignorant. It doesn't sound here like OP is trying to pass on any LGBT folk values. Yeah. It just sounds like you're right. Sometimes, especially if you don't know, this is just the way that it can come out. And mm. I do think even away from LGBT plus issues, so many things that you can say to kids and kids then take it totally the wrong way and they say something else and you're like, oh, I didn't mean for that to happen. Yes. <laughs> so OP continues. Months later, I get a call from his teacher. Apparently he was kissed by a boy and screamed, <laughs> ew, I don't want to be a gay. <sighs> okay. So his teacher pulled him aside and asked, why he would say such a thing, to which he said that dad, me, told him that gays can't have babies, and he wants to have babies when he grows up, so he does not want to be gay. Okay. Okay, that's this really... This is exactly the thing where, like, accidents happen, the kids taken yeah. something away that wasn't meant in the way that it was said. Yeah. My confusion is, why is it that the teacher is pulling up the kid and not pulling up the other kid and being like, hey, don't kiss people that don't want to be kissed? Yes, there's that, but I've just had other thoughts about that sentence where the dad said, the discussion eventually arose where he told his son like same, same sex, sex couples can't, can't make babies. babies whereby there absolutely could have been an age appropriate extra bit on there that said there are multiple ways to have a family yeah it so, doesn't make them less your child sometimes yes. couples might need a little bit of help yeah and also i do think it's you're right there's this it's so loaded and this is what i'm saying it really i think this is why you're saying people tie themselves up in knots yeah what should have been said now especially seeing what the kids taken away is the rainbow flag is because sometimes there's lots of love. Like sometimes the only love that we see are between men and women in a very specific way. But there's so many different ways that love can happen. Mm -hmm. And the rainbow flag helps that be seen, right? Yes. You could say it like that. And then the thing about babies, it's not even just same I, I struggle with the term same sex, it's same gender. It's yeah. not just same gender couples that can't make babies. There are men and women that can't make babies. Yeah. And you don't know that and now your kids walk in. It's, yeah. it's a nuanced and situation. And also, and then this does get, in my opinion, for an eight-year-old, just too complicated. Yeah, exactly. If, if we bring in trans people into that as well. And sometimes whereby, like, gay couples can make babies. Yes, because sometimes one is cisgender, one is transgender. That's obviously a conversation. And then your kids' mind is like blown and melted and they don't understand what's yeah. going on because you've overwhelmed yeah. them with and so much And it's not ride. that it's age inappropriate, it's just that it is a lot of information for a child to have. It's the wrong context for a child yeah. who's asking about a rainbow flag. Yes. <laughs> that's I, it. That yeah. is it. I don't blame parent for what's happened up to this point. I feel like it's an unfortunate thing that's happened from a miscommunication that anyone could mm. have done. It's about what happens next that I'm more interested yeah. in. Kindly read on. Mm, I will. His teacher basically implies that I'm homophobic. Ah. Explains that there are lots of same-sex couples that have happy families through IVF slash surrogacy, even though I have never said anything to the contrary. All I did was point out a biological fact, which in turn riles her up because I'm not admitting fault when I know I didn't do anything wrong. Am I the drama? I, ooh, oh. yeah, th this is now like, th this in is my opinion, into the realm this of, is... Like not taking accountability yes. and being like, whoops, yeah, I messed up here. I think what's happening, teacher is saying, hey, are you being homophobic? Because you're teaching your child something that sounds really homophobic. Yes. And you should be like, oh my God, I'm an ally. <laughs> <laughs> Channel your inner heart stopper. It is 
not my intention to have said that. My kid took something the wrong way. Yeah. I will do better at explaining this to my child. Yes, because I can see if a child says, I don't want to be gay when I grow up because my daddy said that gay people can't have children. Like, I'd be like, oh, what is your father teaching you? If yeah, you're saying that I, you, I would be you as actively like are scared of growing up and being gay. Though I still maintain the teacher's primary focus should be on telling the other child not to kiss people without their consent. But assuming that is also being yes. done. Yes, I yes. agree with you. We, we will just need to assume that was done. Sure. Hopefully it was <laughs> <Yeah>. done. <laughs> Because I think what the teachers said, there are many gay couples are ways, yeah. that have happy families through IVF surrogacy. It's not just... Can you it, tell your child this, please? So yeah. they can stop trying, like, running around saying that they don't want to be As gay. As a parent, I feel like the response would be like, I can see where the miscommunication has happened. Thank you for clarifying it with my son. I agree so with your opinion. So sorry that this has happened. Yeah. Can I make sure that my son's consensual boundaries are not broken again? Yes. And I will also have a chat with my child. What riles me up is I'm not getting the vibes from like the way it was described in the first place that... OP is homophobic because I feel like someone who was homophobic would tell their kid either like oh we don't learn about that or like no you're not allowed to know about that now or oh no it's just something weird or whatever mm -hmm. but he did actually take the time to do explain his best it. to explain it he made an error along the way in just kind of the communication but what riles me up is that all I did was point out a biological fact it just doesn't sit right with me I do hear you I agree with you I feel the same way and I'm just like what? why why not just take accountability and be like yeah that was a wrong thing yeah but I wonder, there's a reason that Opie has told us about his son's grade 2 autism. Yeah. It might be that there's more to the conversation that he doesn't feel is appropriate or relevant to share now, but mm. maybe his thinking was, you know what, I know that my child, because of this trait, is particularly fact-driven. It might be that that's the direction that the conversation went down. So in that moment, OP is saying in their mind, look, all I was doing in that moment was sharing a fact. It doesn't mean that you can't then say, however, this has still taken down the wrong context and yeah. I need to speak to them because yeah. you're right, there are other ways. And both and of which are also biological facts, IVF and surrogacy, are facts of biology that can happen. Yeah. Like it's a very simple add-on to the explanation or a very simple, yes, I can see. I can see why your flag is raised as well because when people try and say biological fact in that sense, it's a hard half-truth, which is a problem. Typically, a same gender couple would not be able to have biological kids of their own. Mm -hmm. It's about the implications of that. By saying that, what are you implying? What is What, what else is being said without being said when you say mm. something like that? What you're saying is they're on a back foot. They are lesser than in some way and that nobody else has those issues because you're othering specifically same gender couples here to have those issues yeah. when none of that is the case. It is also a biological fact that some straight couples have issues. <laughs> it's also a biological fact that some gay couples can conceive. Yeah when there's a trans person involved. There are, yeah. you know, so many different biological facts which makes this a half-truth, which is why you should just go, okay, my bad, let me redo that. Yeah, and why it would be like, there are different ways to have babies. Yes. And I, I am feel like... on the same page with you, teacher. Thank you for calling yes. it out. I can clarify, I am not a homophobe. Yeah, that's what I would be saying. <laughs> let's, uh, let's try and help educate this child properly. I'm also curious, like at eight years old, I don't think a child would have even learned the biological in quote, facts of baby making. Yeah. I feel like they're too, they're, that's too young. They wouldn't yeah. have had that education yet. Yeah. Or if it is, it's on a very, very that's simplistic saying, like, level. So a like, mummy and why? a daddy make a baby. Sometimes a mummy and a mummy can make a baby. Sometimes a daddy and a daddy can make a baby. Do you just and mean? yeah, and it's all in different ways of making babies. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Everyone can have a family. This age, kids are still believing in flipping Santa Claus. Do you know what I mean? Like, I we don't need to start bringing biological facts <laughs> into yeah. these discussions. Okay. I think Opie's actually provided a little bit of extra info though. Yeah. So Opie said adding some context based on repeat questions. Okay. I'm mm. I'm intrigued. So a lot of people are asking, why are you telling your child about making babies in a discussion about love? I think this okay. will help clarify the context yes, of the conversation. Yes, I'm hoping so. So OP said, I did not lead to the conversation there. Most of our conversations are really just him asking a bunch of questions and me answering. Eventually, he asked if two boys could become pregnant with a baby, and I replied that that could never happen. We're also Swedish, and here it's normal to answer honestly when your kids ask about babies, etc. This is where my head is going to, if mm. your kid has an autistic trait, I can so see why you might just be used to like a bunch of questions yeah i think it's a really beautiful way that someone can explore the world and mm. if you're seeing that as really technical you're just providing that technical information fine but again it is your 
duty, in my opinion, at that point to be like, no, technically two boys can't become pregnant with a baby in many situations. However, that doesn't mean they can't have a baby. Yes. And like, maybe there was a fear. I wonder if there was also a fear or a slight discomfort from OP about opening up those new level of questions by saying that there are different ways to have a family and like maybe he wasn't sure how to handle them. Mm. It might be that OP is just know. like a super straight dude who actually isn't homophobic but doesn't yeah. have the lens to think about maybe that was something to say because privilege can stop mm. you from feeling like this is a conversation that you need to have because you just don't know yeah. and then you're getting your guard up because the teacher's like you're being homophobic and you're like I'm not homophobic I was just stating fact. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I, I'm getting the vibe perhaps wrongly that OP isn't actually homophobic. No, no. Just I, a bit of a nugget. <laughs> I don't think that OP is actually homophobic and it, there's maybe a bit of like oh and I replied that that could never happen with Swedish so it's normal to answer honestly I don't know what the culture in Sweden is like I I feel like that could also vary a lot family to family um, but also like it's just normal as, practice to answer honestly right? as, yeah <laughs> but as well technically it's not the full honest answer but it was honest to I'm assuming OP's knowledge yeah so therefore I appreciate where he's coming from with that I just think it's less a problem of actual like views and morals in terms of like LGBT plus people just and it's more it a problem of stubbornness you made a boo boo yeah <laughs> correct it mm -hmm. you're a parent another question that got asked a lot was why didn't the teacher care about kissing without consent Thank you. here you go <laughs> OP answered she did tell the other boy that he can never kiss anybody without asking for permission first she actually led with that leading to me initially believing that the main reason she called me was because somebody had kissed him without consent so teacher did address it good and that's what OP thought the problem was going to be I mean but that was also the problem that was like, also there can the problem. be two problems yeah. hey this person kissed your kid without consent and also I think you might be homophobic and then OP's just shut that conversation down I would love to say as well Perhaps away from this point, it kind of makes me feel happy. happy. <laughs> I'm saying this hesitantly, that a teacher has gone out of their way to contact a parent to make sure that there are not LGBT phobic uh, values. Because in yeah. this world and in this current flavour mm -hmm. of phobia from the unknown and where LGBT plus identities in particular being politicised, there is a real fear and now more than fear, genuine negative consequences for mm. teachers essentially like reviving what's all the shittery that section 28 brought yeah. to our doorstep. Yeah, right? with a primary focus on trans identities now, but yes, in so, essence, shutting down. I just wanted to point out, brownie badge, I don't give these out often. <gasps> I don't know if you, have you ever done a brownie badge? No, I want to do a brownie badge because okay. I like it. <laughs> these are very special badges that I give out when I think that I'm someone's gone above and beyond. And I want to brownie badge this teacher because yeah. that's a really sweet thing that I feel like, especially in today's society, they're actually being discouraged from doing as somebody in a duty of care. Yeah. So thank you, teacher. Thank you. Are you ready for a verdict. Oh yeah, oh my gosh. Oh, oh. I have a verdict, oh. but I are you ready? No. I think She's I thinking. am. She's thinking. I think I am. Yeah. Okay, three, two, one. You're the drama. You are the drama. You too. Yes, okay. but not for the question originally asked. I'm sorry, my brain is trying to catch up with what you just said. OP is not the drama for what they said initially to their son. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. OP yeah. is the drama for being stubborn with the, the teacher yeah. and going all defensive without using it as a learning moment of like, totally okay, I went a little bit too literal with my child right then and I can see where the misunderstanding fine. happened. It happens. It's okay. If it, I take it away from this context and that's, that's what I'm saying, that's what I do. It's not about <laughs> slippery slope fallacy. It's just trying to understand things by applying principles to different situations. One of the things that this made me think of was that when I'm a parent, I have thoughts on religion, right? Mm -hmm. I particularly am not comfortable with religion mm -hmm. as a topic. The idea of a heaven and hell and being dictated what you do beyond just being a good person in this life, but therefore making sacrifices here in order for, the, for an afterlife that may or may not happen is something that greatly causes discomfort to me. Mm -hmm. So I've thought about this often. If I've got a little child, right, and my little squish comes to me and is like, hey, mom, am I going to go to heaven? Am I going to sit there and give this child total existential crisis and be like, well, you might just end up being a rotting corpse in the ground. It could be that there's nothing beyond that. Who knows? You know, like, this is not an appropriate conversation for an eight-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> rotting corpse absolutely makes it inappropriate for a young squish. Do you, do you see what I mean? I could totally see me saying, potentially there could be this and you know what, we should be a good person regardless of that consequence, just because it's the right thing to do yeah right and then i could totally see my child going around on the playground being like my mommy says that there's no heaven and hell you know or like you might not go to heaven even if you don't go there or like whatever they end up saying and causing
causing another child severe discomfort and confusion. And then a teacher calling me and being like, sorry, did you just encourage your child that there's no hell and so it doesn't matter about consequences? And me being like, whoa, 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 hold up. Yeah. It can happen. Yeah, I loved your little story there. That was great. I can actually see that happening. That's my point. And it doesn't mean that I'm anti religion. Don't know how I would address that question with a child. Daddy, what, what is there happening in hell? I don't know why I've given my I've, child a, a cockney yeah, accent. Fine. <laughs> They're now a little I, Oliver Twist. I'd get really like, I'd put my glasses on, put my newspaper down and just be like, well, child. You've never read a newspaper no, in your life. <laughs> One you of, scroll on your phone. <laughs> I would put my phone down and I'll be like, well, child, that is one of life's great unknowns. So just leave it at that. <laughs> like we've got some preparation to do. Sure. But my point is, I can see how this can come from a non-phobic place yes. and just be a bit of a boo-boo. But you know, yeah. own it. Own yeah. it, fix it. Still, the drama for not being able to take on board criticism. Agreed. Should we see if other people agree? Mm-hmm. What kids hear sometimes and what they take from a conversation isn't always the same thing. And as a teacher, I'd have assumed she would have understood that. Not the drama but you might want to sit down and have another conversation with your son and explain it slightly differently i appreciate where this is coming from i do see i'm intrigued that they've kind of put the onus on the teacher to understand that the child may have misinterpreted what the dad said rather than the onus on the dad to hear that something that something could have been explained differently to have avoided that situation and then he didn't acknowledge that but i kind of think that that's why she is calling she didn't call and go hey you're a homophobe fix it she asked you know like can i clarify what you said to your child because your child is saying I don't want to be a gay and that mm. is a problem yeah right yes I agree with the perspective I'm not upset about this badge I still stick with my badge yeah but I respect too. that badge that's yeah. what I'm there can be two different badges for the same situation oh yeah I do I think this one does kind of have that vibe of like why didn't the teacher understand that kids can be wrong she needs to go to a parent to clarify that first and he gave no indication that the child had misheard what he'd said maybe there is definitely like a kind of extrapolating in the kid's mind but it's it's what the dad said and he's not owning up to the fact that it could have been explained in a better way that's why i think there's still the drama badge but i, I, I see what you. they're saying yeah. but i definitely think yeah they're putting a lot of fault on the teacher here not the drama Ooh. and the teacher is way way out of line to question how you parent your child mm. you raise your child however you see fit the teacher can keep her sense of morals to herself i feel this why do i, I feel like this is said by a homophobe <laughs> you actually can't raise your child however you see fit you can raise your child non-liberal ideals you mm. can raise your child with stigma absolutely but there is always a limit to what you can do Mm -hmm. the state will interfere if you are being bad right if you are raising your child in a way that is not right Mm -hmm. you cannot raise your child how you see fit yeah but also as far as i'm aware when you send your child to school whilst they're at school the teacher has a duty of care over the child and therefore can make a comment if something's been said the other boy Mm -hmm. was wrong for kissing without consent and he's been told that but how would that boy have been made to feel because op's son said something negative about being gay the yeah, teacher so has right. a duty of care to say your child said something that has the potential to upset other children in the classroom yeah. because of this especially if that child is gay yes which they really might be if they're going around kissing boys yeah it could be that they're just trying to understand things yeah but yeah don't inflict that stigma onto other people my point is what if that other child went home and their parents were like no if you want to kiss someone you can kiss someone that's bad parenting yeah. you can't just raise your child how you see fit and expect the world to go along with it no other people who are in a duty of care specifically around other kids who also need safeguarding mm. need to be able to be taught this is a teacher yeah. teaching that. No, <laughs> I, I don't know. I see what you're saying. And I don't think that this commenter would have said this if OP were the parent of the boy who did the kiss and was called in to be like, your son kissed another boy without consent. I feel right. like OP would be like, yes, the teacher was right to call you. It's just setting off your little phobe dar. It's setting off my phobe dar. Setting off my phobe dar Yeah, too. because I can think of so many contexts where you would not say a teacher was out of line to question parenting. This is exactly why I think teachers need to have that responsibility and that's why Mm. I really dislike the way that the current legislation in the states is going by ridding teachers of the ability to have these conversations that could end up being really healthy because it's about how your child integrates again taking it away from LGBT stuff when I was younger I was not allowed for a substantial period of time to go to assemblies with religious stuff yeah religious things in them to do a bunch of different things because of religion right I was not exposed to a level of that and part way through that teachers said sorry 
no, you're not allowed to not expose your child to these things because it's important to learn the ways of the world. Not mm. everybody functions how your family functions. And yeah. for me, that was a really useful and valuable lesson. Mm. That is why we need teachers to be able to share <laughs> that with everything yeah. in all contexts. I feel like this person homeschools their kid. <laughs> I think you're going a bit far with that, but I can see No, but this is the discomfort. number one argument given a lot of the times when I see children being homeschooled for like reasons of not wanting other views to be shared it's from very right-wing people who are like i don't want liberal morals being imparted how on my child dare you tell my child that gay people exist yeah that's exactly what it is mm. no drama here says someone else you could have mm. explained it better to be honest because what you're implying is not what the message should be this comment is what i have a problem with <laughs> with the forum sort of generally you're just like you could have done it better but you're not the drama but then if you're doing something wrong saying not the drama doesn't mean that you didn't have good intentions it means that you did a thing that was a bit dramatic so yeah you're the drama do you know what i mean like don't be afraid to give someone that badge you can yeah. say you're the drama and i still think you had good intentions yeah hell is paved with good intentions my friend you're still the drama i'm intrigued as to why nobody's commented yet on the unwillingness to listen to the to the teacher's feedback yeah like because that's and no one else has given the badge that we get yeah that's what we've judged the drama being on not yeah. the initial explanation but the the stubbornness later everybody yeah. comes at it with their different viewpoints it's very interesting that's mm. why i like doing this podcast yeah Oh, oh! I think you're the drama, says someone else. Okay, because of your obtuse way of explaining this caused the situation and you seem to be letting this pass on some sort of specific technicality when you should be correcting your this son. This is kind of more in line okay, with what you've said. Yeah. Cisgender gay men Or a cannot... woke person oh, who understands the word cisgender. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> cannot carry a pregnancy to term themselves or impregnate each other. That's true, but you've let your son think that gay families aren't a thing and that's incorrect and keeping him misinformed. This is what Absolutely. I was talking about, about the half-truth. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. Yes, and I, and I completely agree with you when you said it makes gay couples and gay families, well, gay families seem impossible to this child and gay couples seem lesser because they can't have you're a family. Othering, right? Not that having a family is the be all and end all of being a couple and couples are families to each other as well. But you see what I'm saying? Am I making sense? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If we take it away from politics entirely, if our child came up to us and went, hey, mum, I would really like to eat healthy because my school has told me that I need to eat healthy. What can I have as a snack all the time for me to be healthy? Mm -hmm. And I went, well, apple. Apples. apples are healthy. Apples, apples, apples. And that was it. I'm not wrong for saying that apples are healthy. But by saying that, there are so many other fruits that my child could be having. So many other healthy things that my child could be having, right? Mm. That isn't an apple. It's not what I'm saying. It's what I'm not saying that also has relevance. And that's what makes sense. Oh, that's truth. what you're getting at. Okay, yeah, yeah. I get you. Because I feel like some people might be like, get their backs up because it's an LGBT thing. So I wanted yes. to explain that, you know, like you can, I'm, I'm not wrong by saying it's apples. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I, there is an element of wrongness by also not saying that there are other things. Yeah with the ignorance of a squish. Yeah. The commenter carried on. The teacher wasn't in the wrong to suspect you're teaching your son homophobic attitudes because you had an opportunity to explain about various ways babies come into the world and you chose not to. You digging your feet in to say <laughs> you did nothing wrong is mostly what cements my vote here. This is exactly my opinion. Th this sums up what we just spent like 20 minutes talking about. Which is wonderful. Yeah. And I love how validated you feel <laughs> by seeing someone else share your opinion. It's because it's so common to see people call homophobes not the drama because they're also homophobic or to call the gay person in a situation the drama because and it's like because of an unconscious the, bias. yeah we're, we're just seeing homophobia here everywhere so i was like mm, people are just gonna but away from that i think not it is critically just nice look at this to see people share your opinion yes and that's okay too that's why this exists because yeah. we can have and they said points. cisgender so. <laughs> i think maybe because we had a little discussion at the beginning which i think was the right thing to do maybe we should just do the two today all right to yes, not overload sure. listeners you know yeah and we did bring that discussion we brought down. our we've spoken a lot yeah. we almost brought our own little comment into this one today to yeah have a chat about. I, I know this has been a slightly different episode i hope you're not feeling some kind of way negatively about me addressing what i did at the beginning and i hope that we can continue to just have these really useful and valuable conversations in my opinion in yeah. a safe space that's all i want it to be for yeah. everybody yeah to clarify it's totally fine to disagree it's yeah. totally fine to share that disagreement it's with totally us. fine to call out and it's totally fine to call out if as and when we say
say things wrong because we will and we do but what's not okay is to allow One, not do it kindly to yes, anyone and to allow biases to mean that you're putting all of that attention negatively on one person undeservingly so thank you for listening yeah um, so <laughs> yeah <laughs> kick them in the butt butt no because like the other half of me is like oh but sometimes i know you don't mean it that way but no no the reality yeah. is objectively that is what's happening we yeah. can see it in the data it's not okay don't but, diminish it yeah yeah own, exactly own that. It. i should own it yeah, yeah. you're allowed <laughs> to say this people don't have to listen but I've you're also, allowed to say it unfortunately it does mean that we're missing out on one today which was supposed to be a listener one but we will address that next episode yes. do be aware that we have a little form on our website if mm-hmm. you have an am i the drama post that you would like some help with please do send it to us send it our way we get a lot of requests but in time <laughs> yes the, we will get through the right them. criteria we will get through it and we'd yes. love to help you out. if you're listening to this on any of the podcast platforms such as spotify or apple Podcasts, please think about giving us a lovely little rating that'd be very much appreciated Woo! and if you are on youtube think about giving a thumbs up and subscribing to check out more of shaba's videos I'd and more of this podcast it. if you like the video version and if you want to carry on the conversation you can have a chat with us over at 1800 drama pod on insta yes you can thank you so much for listening until next time be kind much love and have a great day bye, bye.